oh, it just won't work. What am I going to do? Today, I'm going to solve your problems with focals on necklaces. We're gonna talk all about it. Hello, welcome back, my name's Carol. This necklace that I'm making today took me about six weeks to make because I kept putting it aside because it wasn't working. I'd get it out again and it still wasn't working. You know, sometimes that happens and we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. I'm gonna to talk you step by step through making this necklace and I'm going to leave you a link in the description box below to a blog post which will contain links to all of the supplies that I'm using. So let's get making. Okay, so what I have in front of me are the supplies that I use to make this necklace. And you'll note something really important. I am using bright copper. I'm using a matte copper. I'm using an antique bronze. I'm using a bronze. I'm using a red copper. So I'm covering my bases in terms of materials. And the reason I'm doing that is because well, firstly, I didn't have the right materials and that was part of the problem. I also wanted to mix it up a bit. I wanted to make sure that this necklace was a little bit edgy and I've used the different metals to make it that way. So let's first talk about what we've got here and then I'll talk about why it didn't work. So I have my copper 20 gauge wire. I've got a 12 millimeter lobster clasp and that is copper as well. These are single-sided diamond connectors. Now they're actually a square, but obviously if you turn them on the side they're a diamond, and they have loops all the way around so you could actually make them, use them either way. And I've got three of those. I've got a black head pin simply because I didn't have any bronze ones or any copper ones. I have some 10 millimeter check glass beads and the color is amethyst. I have got some four millimeter desert sun beads as well as that, I've got some of my favorite beads. If you've been watching my channel, you know I use these 8x6 rondelles all the time. They're glass and they're faceted. And this one, the color is amethyst. I also have this teardrop. This is an Indian glass teardrop and it's 25 millimeters long. As well as that, I've got some three millimeter antique bronze balls. And I've got some red copper jump rings. These are four millimeters. I've got some stamped leaf charms, four of them. And I've got some chain, which is also in the copper. When I first started making this necklace, I actually based it around this crescent moon connector, which is fabulous, but it just didn't work. I honestly cannot tell you why it didn't work. It just didn't. It looked weird. <laughs> I also used some square brass wire and I quite liked it at the time, but then later on I changed my mind. I also changed some of the beads as well. So it just, just nothing was working. So what I decided was I didn't have a um, connector that was gonna work. So what I decided was that I would make my own. Now I've made my own focals before using beads, but I've never made one using connectors. And that's what I did this time. I took three of my connectors and I decided to use them as they are diamonds like this. So I put the three of them together. So they looked like that. And I really liked that. And I thought, okay, this is something I can work with. And it seemed to be in proportion much better to the necklace. And I think probably the reason the Crescent Moon one wasn't working was because it was actually too chunky. So I decided to make my own and this is what I came up with. When you're designing a necklace, if you do have that problem of a, of a focal not working, you kind of need to leave it alone for a bit. And I was talking to the Jewelry Junkies uh, group about this the other day. What you need to do if you're feeling that a project isn't working is put it down, walk away, do something else and come back to it. And I did that several times with this necklace just because it wasn't working and I needed a break so that I could digest. When you are in a project and you're working hard and you're thinking, you know, this is gonna be great and it's not, then it can actually make you feel, well, it can actually make you feel a little bit depressed and it can make you feel uninspired. So the best thing to do is actually walk away, have a break, maybe make something else or 
even do something else and then come back to it and often the answers will come the creativity once it's gone it does come back I promise you so what I'm going to do first is take my pliers and I'm going to open some jump rings and connect these together so if you haven't used jump rings before I'll leave you a link in the description box below for a video all about how to use them I have my jump ring here and I'm going to hold it on either side with my pliers and open it and what I'm going to do is fold this connector on top of that one so that they are right sides together and I am going to connect them at the corner just feeding them both onto the jump ring and closing up that jump ring even though I decided that I quite liked it in this configuration it took me a while to figure out how to put them together <laughs> so that they were um, going to sit right. So that's what I have, they're just connected there via that jump ring. Next I'm going to take another jump ring and connect them at the bottom so that they are both connected side by side. So once again folding it on top of it itself, the other one, and just connecting them in exactly the same way. So now I've got both of those connected, both ends connected with a jump ring. So that's that part. Now I need to connect this one in exactly the same way. So I'm going into that same loop there with this jump ring and I'm going to go into that loop with this jump ring. So once again taking another jump ring, folding that one over onto this one and connecting the bottom. By the way these are single sided so you need to make sure that you're putting them face to face otherwise you'll end up with them upside down so you can see there I have connected that one there and I need to bring this one around and connect it here so I'm going to fold that one over like that pop it down and grab another jump ring and do the same thing that's what I have now next we're going to make the part that goes between this loop and this loop and I'm going to use some wire to do that as I said I started off this project with some antique bronze wire and it was square wire and I used wire wrap loops and initially I really liked it but as time went on I thought mm, I don't really like that first off I'm going to make a wire wrapped loop now my best advice for you with a wire wrap loop is give yourself plenty of wire to work with so I've actually folded quite a lot down here it's about two and a half inches or five centimeters and I'm going to take my round nose pliers and pop them into that bend there and I'm going to wrap my wire around the jaws of the pliers and back down then I'm going to twist my hand around and I'm going to pull that wire up like that now I do have a video on how to make a wire wrap loop so I'll leave you a link in the description box for that one as well now I'm not putting anything in this wire wrapped loop so I'm going to close it so I'm going to take hold the loop in the jaws of my chain nose pliers and I'm actually going to use my pliers I wasn't going to you know sometimes you think you can do something and you, <laughs> and you can't I get a better wrap if I use my pliers so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to wrap it around once and twice if I can get hold of it So that's what I have now and I'm going to trim off that end making sure I hold it so it doesn't fly away and I'm just going to tuck in that little tail there of my wire just give it a little squeeze and just feel it make sure it's not sticking out so there's my wire wrapped loop Next I'm going to put on some beads. I am going to put on one of my little balls. Whoops, three millimeter balls. Wants to run away. And I am going to put on one of my rondelles. And another three millimeter ball. That's what I have. Now I'm going to bend the wire and make a wire wrap loop at this end as well. So to do that I'm going to take my pliers and hold the wire at the top of the beads. It's allowing me to leave a little bit of space so that when before I make my bend 
so that when I wrap it, there'll be some space for the wrap. So I'm just going to bend that over, take my round nose pliers and make a loop. Now, if you're new to wire wrapping um, or to making loops, it is a good idea to um, pop a little mark on your pliers so that every loop is the same size. Now this one, I've actually got enough wire that I can actually pull it around and make a nice neat wrap. And just trimming off the end, tucking it in. Now for this one, I actually want to make sure that my loops are going in the same direction. So what I'm going to do is take my loops, one on each plier, and just twist so that they're facing the same way. I'm actually going to use my crimping pliers to tuck my ends in and the reason for that is they've got nice fine tips so I'm going to just use that to tuck my end in. There's my first connector and we're going to attach it with some jump rings. Now as I said it took me a while to figure out how to do this. I ended up attaching one to the connector and then a run of three to get it all facing the right way. First we're going to open a jump ring and we're going to pop on it onto each of these top connectors or top loops of the connector and I'm going to repeat that for the other side. Here's my connectors and they have a jump ring on either on the top of each piece there. Now we're going to connect some jump rings so we can connect our focal piece. What I'm going to do is open a jump ring and I'm going to put it onto the end of my or the loop of my connector that I just made. And I'm just going to close it up. And I might do the other end at the same time. There we go. So that's my connector with a jump ring on either end. Now before I connect it, what I'm going to do is make my next lot of connectors. So I'm just going to put this aside for a minute. And I am going to take some more wire and I'm going to make a connector because they all connect into that series of jump rings there so it's easier to do them all at once. So I'm going to make a wire wrapped loop just like before there's my loop next I'm going to thread on one of my three millimeter balls then a rondelle a desert sun bead another ball, one of my 10 millimeter amethyst check glass beads and that's what I have now and I'm going to reverse this so that I get it on the other end. So one of my three millimeter balls, my desert sun, my rondelle and another of my three millimeters. In the accompanying blog post, which is the top link in the description box below, I will leave you a layout diagram of all these components. It makes it much easier if you can actually see exactly what you're making. So I will do that for you. So just going to make a wire wrap loop here, just like before. So you will need two of those, so I'll go ahead and make another one. All right, now I have two of those. I'm going to go ahead and attach them using my jump rings. And I'm going to feed on it onto the connector of this one. Or the loop of this connector that I just made. Now this time I only want to do it on one end of each piece, so I will do that with the other one as well. So those pieces go there. And this piece comes down here. Now they all connect to one central jump ring. So I've got a jump ring here that's open, so what I'm going to do is connect this one to the jump ring, then I'm going to connect this one, making sure that I get it on the right side so that it's facing the right way. Let's try that again. And then I'm going to connect this one. And then I'm going to close my jump ring. That's what I have now. Now I know this group of jump rings looks like a bit of a jumble but they are all there and they are all going to sit right so that everything will eventually sit where it's supposed to. So I'm going to repeat that for the other side. There it is sitting nicely. Now what I have done here 
with these jump rings is I've got this one here is sitting that way. The middle one is sitting this way and the two side ones are sitting that way. I hope that makes sense. The reason for that is so everything will sit right and be facing the right way. So to finish it, what I decided to do was I obviously wanted to put this in the middle here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take some more wire and I'm going to thread it through my bead. And I want to thread it through about that much. So I'm just pulling the wire up to the top of the bead. Now I actually want to give myself quite a lot of space here. And I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to make a bend in the wire at the top. And I'm going to bring them together like that. I want to make a wire wrapped loop but of course I've got two wires here so I'm actually going to just cross them over and I'm going to twist this one around a couple of times trying to make it nice and tight and make it look good. Now it doesn't look very good so I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to push it down. And it's a bit better. Right, so that is what I have now and I'm going to trim off that end. That's what I have and I'm going to make a wire wrap loop on the top. So once again, taking my pliers, I'm going to make a bend, take my round nose pliers and make a loop. Once again, I'm not putting anything in this loop. I'm going to attach it with a jump ring. So I don't need to worry about uh, feeding anything onto it. Now I'm going to wrap this and I'm going to wrap it whoops, down until it meets the other wraps. Just wondering if I can squeeze another one in there. Yes. So that's what it looks like now and I'm going to trim off my wire and tidy it all up. Now I actually did that on purpose, I wanted it to be a nice long wrap. So just tucking my ends in, making sure everything's nice and neat. There we go, that looks a bit better. Next we're going to attach this to the bottom loop. So I'm going to take a jump ring, this one happens to be already open which is fabulous, I like it when that happens. And I'm going to feed on my loop that I just made and the bottom loop of the connector. Now you want to make sure that your teardrop is facing the right way because you don't want the um, connect the joins where you wire wrapped to be facing the front. That's what it looks like now. Next we're going to add our little stamped leaves to the sides of the connector and I'm going to do that using my more jump rings. This is all about jump rings today. So opening my jump ring and I'm going to first go into this loop here of the top connector, the corner one, and put on my leaf. Now these leaves are also single-sided so you want to make sure that they're facing the right way. And close up your jump ring. This project actually looks a lot harder than it is. <laughs> I like that in the project. There it is. Now we're going to attach one to this jump ring here using the same techniques. I'm going to put it on the front of the jump ring and closing that up. There we go. I've got my two leaves on this side. I'm going to put two more on the other side as well. There is the focal all complete. It's looking really cool I think with the copper and the bronze and the brass it's just I feel like it's just working really really well. Next we're going to add another connector on this side on each side. So to do that I'm going to take some more wire. Just while I'm doing that if you're enjoying this it would be wonderful if you would hit that subscribe button for me. Of course hit the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. For the next one we're going to start off with a wire wrapped loop just like before. This time I'm going to feed on a little brass ball. I'm going to feed on a rondelle. One of my Desert Sun beads. 
and another rondelle and finally another ball that's what I have and I'm going to make another loop in this end Now if you do struggle with wire wrap loops you could try using a 20 gauge a 22 gauge wire instead of a 20 uh, that might help you to get your loops a little better it's a good way to begin is using a, a smaller gauge wire I actually learned to make loops using a wire wrap loops using a 26 gauge and that worked really well for me but I find they, that I prefer to use a heavier gauge but that's just a personal preference there's my connector and of course I need another one of those so I'll go ahead and make that now I'm going to add some jump rings I'm going to connect it to this with some jump rings so taking my jump ring and opening it you'll be sick of hearing me say that <laughs> and I'm going to feed on the connector I just made and the loop of the last connector I made the big one and then I'm closing that up and I'm going to repeat for the other side there we go that's what we have now the rest of the necklace is going to be a piece of chain and I'm going to cut my chain and then attach it and then I'm going to make an extender so I've got a piece of chain here which is 25 centimeters long just about 10 inches I think <laughs> and I am going to cut a piece 10 centimeters long so I'm just taking my ruler and measuring and that one there so nip that off and I'll make another piece the same which means I've got a five center should have a five centimeter piece left for my extender and you know what we're going to do we're going to attach it with a jump ring so just taking my pliers and just like before opening my jump ring And I'm taking the end connector that I just made and connected and attaching the chain. And I'm closing up the jump ring. And I want to repeat that for the other side, so I'll go ahead and do that. That's where we are now. Now we're going to attach the clasp and the extender chain as well. I didn't tell you this before, but you are going to need a six millimeter jump ring as well. The reason for this is I like to do up my clasp into a six millimeter jump ring. It just makes it easier for me personally. If you want to use a four, that's fine. So what we're going to do is use our six millimeter jump ring. We're going to make our extender chain first and we're going to put it on the left hand side of our necklace. For me, because I'm right handed, I might like my clasp to go on the right hand side. But if you're left handed, you can reverse that. So to make our extender, we are going to take our head pin. We're going to add a ball. And one of our desert sun beads and all I'm going to do is make a loop in the top not a wire wrapped loop this time so I'm going to bend the wire over like that and I'm going to cut it at about a centimeter now if you haven't made loops before I will leave you a link in the description box below for a video on how to make the perfect loop even if you have made loops before it's a really good one to watch because there's lots of troubleshooting on what to do if your loops go wrong so what I'm doing is I'm tucking my thumbnail into the bend there and I am going to just twist it around and there's my little component now I'm going to use another jump ring of course and I'm going to attach it to the end of my five centimeter piece of chain so just opening it up putting the component on and the chain and closing up my jump ring so there is my extender now I didn't need to do this I could have just left it as a straight piece of chain but I feel like that just gives it that little professional finish just makes it a little bit unique now what I'm going to do is take my six millimeter jump ring which I've got over here and open it and as I said I'm putting this on the left hand side of the necklace because I liked my clasp to be on the right hand side because I'm right handed so this is actually even though this is on my right hand side because I have to turn it over when I put it on 
so this is the end that I want to put it on. So feeding on the end of that chain and the end of the chain of my extender and closing up my jump ring. So there it is and you can just see the six millimeter jump ring there. All that's left to do now is put on my clasp and I'm going to do that with a four millimeter jump ring. Now personally I like to attach my clasps with a four millimeter jump ring. If you want to use a six that's fine, it's entirely up to you. So just opening my jump ring and feeding on my end of my chain and the loop from my clasp and just closing it up. So here it is on. I needed to put it on for you to see it properly because it's got a lot of moving parts and it wasn't doing it justice lying down on my mat. So there it is. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Personally, I think this is so much more delicate and pretty than using that Crescent Moon connector that I started with. Let me know in the comments section. Do you agree? Even though this is using warm metals, I think I will still wear it even though I'm a cool person because I just really like it. I think it's really cool and it's got that little bit of edge that I like as well. Remember the top link in the description box below will take you to the blog post. The blog post will contain links to everything I used, step-by-step -step instructions and layout diagrams for the connectors that I made. So hopefully you will find that useful. Remember to check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon.